Notice that his hip starts to rise. Now it's a matter of just directing his body out and tilting our knee to the inside. There's the lower back exposure. Now we have a clear advantage out of the scramble position here. Today we're gonna to look at a scramble position, a cross body ride. And the reason that it's a scramble is because whenever we're in it, there's no, there's no sense really of dominant position until you can get your partner into a very specific place. Most positions in jiu-jitsu, when we're doing like, cross, you know, if you're in the top of the cross side position, top of the mount, positional hierarchy is very clear. But what characterizes scramble positions is that there's no clear hierarchy until something shifts, right? And so for this position, the cross body ride where our legs are interlocked, unless we get our partner's hips, in this case, really, unless we get our partner's hips above our hips, it's anybody's game. And we each, because it's a symmetrical position, we each have equal an equal opportunity to be able to get, to get to there. So let's explore this position a little bit, talk about how we can get to uh, positions of advantage and then some other opportunities that we have for submissions out of here. Sound good? Yep. Okay. So when we are in this position here, right, and it doesn't matter whether we hit it out of a top position or uh, we got here from the bottom, this is a, a case where our legs are intertwined. So if you want to practice this position, this is one way I, I, we suggest to do it. You know, you can lie down side by side with your partner. You take your inside legs and you're going to interlock them like this. All right. You'll notice that at this point, both our hips are on the floor. In order for me to get a dominant position here, I need to figure out a way to get his hips up off the mat. And the reason that this becomes dominant is not just because his hip is floating on mine, but because now we have lower back exposure. And lower back exposure, the only thing better than that is upper back exposure. And then out of upper back exposure, we can begin to take advantage of submissions, okay? So when we're here, one of the best things that we can look to do initially is to place our outside foot on our inside foot, okay? And I've discussed this in a, another video before where like, instead of like locking a figure four here, Oftentimes it makes sense to have open feet, especially if you have concerns about the, the um, risk to your knee for this kind of rotational uh, pressure. But when we're ankle to ankle, okay, or calf to calf, putting your foot on the outside of your foot, your, your right foot in this case on the outside of your left foot, is gonna give you a little bit of a pushing advantage here, especially if his legs remain unlocked. So as I push here, notice that his hip starts to rise. Now it's a matter of just directing his body out and tilting our knee to the inside. There's the lower back exposure. Now we have a clear advantage out of the scramble position here, okay? If on the other hand, he's able to do the same thing. If he's able to tilt my body and bring my hips up, now from here, he has the lower back exposure as he continues to extend, he finds that he has upper back exposure and then he moves into back control, okay? So our first idea here is foot on foot. Rotate with you please, sir is foot on foot in order to extend and elevate, get the hip up, bring the hip onto your hip, and then create an uh, advantageous angle. Another good way of going about this, if you're not as concerned about your uh, pressure on the knee, is to drop your leg into a perpendicular position here relative to your partner's legs. So you can see that my cat, uh, shin forms like a crossbar behind his knee. Out of this position, you can also post foot on foot but there's an opportunity here to reach and control your partner's foot here up at the toes. Now, we do have a submission here. Be careful when you do this. If you reach your inside arm in, your partner can actually arm lock you. So we want to not reach with the inside arm, but rather the outside arm to control the toes. And here we have a calf crush finish. Most of the time with high level people, as you're reaching, you're going to get a reaction here where they start to join their feet start to defend, this is a cue for you to bring your two shins parallel to another, one another and start to extend. There's your back exposure and you're ready to go. Finally, in conjunction with either of these methods, we're, we have the ability to take our outside arm here and reach to our partner's far hip. So we'll often, you'll often see this, I'm just gonna rotate with you again, please. Switch sides. So often you'll see this, gi and no gi both, right, where the goal is to be able to draw the hip up. Instead of just using the legs, we'll use our arms. We take our right, right arm, our outside arm here, and we're going to control our partner's hip. So in conjunction with our legs, we pull to bring our partner's hip up onto our hip here, and you can see where he is. Now we have the option of propping, 
Very often you'll see this as a prelude to coming up into the top position to create a flank or a leg drag. Um, but you can also go directly to the back from here. So once again, one here, we have foot on foot and exposure to bring the hip high. Two, we have the leg figure four here, the attack to the calf crush, which then prompts our partner's reaction. And then we have the back exposure here. And then finally, out of any of these configurations, foot on uh, calf is good, foot on foot is good, even uh, kind of scorpion is good. We use our outside arm turning in towards our partner and our hands assist by pulling the hip up onto our body here. And now we can come up, bring our head above our partner's head. You can see his back is exposed and we can come up and begin to attack into a much better and stronger position. So this scramble position, although it looks like uh, when you first encounter it, it seems like very confusing and it's not clear like whose leg is where and what am I supposed to be doing? Now you have a little bit of a hierarchy to move through, okay? The idea is getting your partner's hips up. You have a way of starting what we talked about lying down side by side and tangling the legs. And then you can use these three methods to start to take advantage, create lower back exposure, then lead to upper back exposure. Okay, hopefully this was helpful for you. Thank you for watching.